Social work has a lot of different areas that you can expand and go in. So gerontology is one. So David Haig, that's his area of expertise. So we know the aging population is increasing uh, in America, so that's a really good thing for students to have an expert on board. My area is narrative and trauma work, and so that also fits in quite nicely and gives a generalist kind of perspective to what's going on in our society. So we're the two main. We also have addictions as a minor and gerontology as a minor. Well, one of the things I love about social work is that it's var variable. So you can go in a lot of different directions. You can go into mental health, you can go into addictions, you can go into medical social work, you can go into school social work. Um, it's varied. And so some people, like I went to grad school with one woman who works in a hospital, kidney dialysis, and she stayed there for her entire career. I, on the other hand, have <laughs> done a lot of different things. I worked hospice, I worked mental health, I worked addictions. I just really like to have change and constant uh, challenges. So social work allows you to do that. You can grow and change with your profession any way you want to. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's always going to be a need for social work. Uh, the U.S. labor reports say that we're one of the fastest growing professions in the United States right now, and the projected growth looks like it's going to extend in the next 10 years. There are three levels of practice, micro, meso, and macro. Micro is if I want to work with individuals. Um, that's another thing I do. I have a private practice, so you can work one-on-one -on -one with individuals. Uh, meso is group practice. I've done a lot with group practice, which is really exciting, like grief groups, or um, I run a peer support group at Candy's Place for people who are experiencing cancer and their caregivers. And macro is community practice. So if I want to work like with homeless population, but I want to affect change in my community, I can go into macro practice, which is also very exciting. I would always suggest shadowing someone in the profession. So if I'm a sophomore or junior in high school and I'm not quite sure, psychology, social work, uh, I'm not quite sure, I would call up a local agency and say, can I just shadow or inter interview your social worker? Uh, and see what her day is like. And I think that's a really good uh, indicator. Is this a fit for me? I have had students come and sit on my class, high school students. Um, I ask permission of my students, okay, if we have a visitor, and then they, they join and they, they see what it's like, what a social work class is like, and what, what some of the content is. Yeah, and that's always, always a good experience. Why I think Misericordia? Because we're a small program. And so that means we really, really know our students. Like I really know our students well. Um, I know their pets' names. I know their parents oftentimes. And that's really good because I think there's a lot of stress, you know, going to school and really getting, high school's different, right? You come to college and it's a different challenge as far as time management and all the unknowns. So to have a faculty who's very supportive and caring about you as a human being, not just as a student, I think speaks volumes about our program. Social work's a small field in a lot of ways, so those interconnections that are lifelong are important. The relationships that we form from the minute they come into our first class to when they walk across that stage, it continues. And they all know this because I give them a warning that I will stay in contact with you. You'll come in as a guest speaker, or you know, I'll refer a student that you could uh, supervise when they're in their field placement. So what happens, their, their sophomore year, they take intro to social work and a couple other courses just to get the theories um, to understand the theories and some of the policies because everything we do there's a policy connected there's a mandate what allows us to do what we we do like how can we go into hum somebody's home how can we go into um, the hospital setting so there's always a policy associated in directing what we can and cannot do we have a mandate so students learn about those those policies first then in the spring semester of their junior year that's their first internship Our program's unique that we have students do more hours than what's required by our accrediting board. 
And a lot of times students think this is the best part of their education because it's experiential learning. So they, the stop their uh, junior year, spring semester, it's 200 hours. Then their senior year, they're in the same placement, both fall and spring semester, for a total of 400 hours, 200 hours each. And that's a lot. I mean, that is a lot of time to be in a field placement. So they're really immersed, yeah. And we get good reviews. Uh, agencies in this community love our students. Uh, it's, and a lot of times it ends up being a job. They end up getting a job, which is really amazing. So just recently, our governor has uh, approved licensure for bachelor level social workers. This is a huge deal. A lot of people in agencies will identify as a social worker. I'm a social worker because they have a good heart and they're doing community service, but they're not really a social worker. They didn't go to an accredited school of social work and do all the things, all the training that our students are required to do. So licensure sets us apart. So if I'm working for children and youth or Area Agency on Aging and I'm a licensed bachelor social worker, that protects the public. Licensure is not about the profession as much as it is uh, built in to protect the public. So we have a National Association of Social Work. That's our professional organization. So in the spring semester, we take our students to Harrisburg and students of social work from social work schools across the state all come to Harrisburg promoting a bill. So whether it's uh, child abuse or elder abuse, whatever the bill is, all the students are aware of this bill and we meet with our legislators and talk to them about the importance of this bill being passed. And so the students get an opportunity to advocate for something important uh, but, and how to, how to talk to your legislator. Um, that's also very important, but also just to see the enormity of the programs across the state. We are an accredited school of social work. So what that means, our accrediting body, the Council of Social Work Education, um, says that we're, we're, they give us accreditation. You have to jump through many, many hoops. Um, but then we have articulation agreements with Marywood and Monmouth. Uh, universities. So our students have kind of, I don't want to say preferential treatment, but they're recognized. Their, their field hours are recognized. So instead of it taking two years to, like it's 60 graduate credits to get a master's in social work, uh, which is a lot, they can go for almost half that time with uh, our articulation agreements, with our advanced standing agreements, with other accredited schools. We have different um, grad programs who now, uh, with uh, COVID, zoom in and talk to our students. This is what our program, this is what Widener offers, this is what Fordham offers, this is what Marywood offers, this is what um, Monmouth. So then students have a really good idea of what the different uh, graduate programs look like.